In this experiment, we're going to be building a Michelson interferometer. A Michelson interferometer is a very uh, accurate instrument for uh, measuring very um, minute displacements in position. We're measuring uh, surface flatness and, and scratches in optics, different contours, and also for uh, vibration analysis. Um, the Michelson interferometer that we'll be building uses a helium neon laser and also there are several other components that we'll pan down to here just to make sure that everybody has the proper equipment. Uh, what we have starting from my right to my left uh, is a microscope objective mounted on a three inch post and post holder, a flat mirror, adjustable mirror mounted on a three inch post and post holder, another identical um, flat mirror mounted on a three inch post and post holder. This assembly, however, is mounted on a linear translation stage and we'll show what that's used for later. Um, if I can look down here and show you how it's mounted there. Just a, a quick note here, this is actually mounted off axis. You can see where which holes it's mounted in and that is because of the, the way the breadboards are configured. Um, uh, the, whole, uh, the holes in the breadboard do not line up properly, so we have to mount it off axis, but it's not a problem. Um, this device here is a beam splitter, cube beam splitter, and it's mounted on a platform, as you can see, uh, and it's actually tightened down. But this is the direction in which the cube beam splitter should be mounted. And if you notice, um, I don't know if you can see very clearly here, but the split between the two prisms that make up the cube beam splitter um, runs in this direction here. Okay, so make sure your optics are, are mounted very stably. Uh, and just moving uh, to my left a little bit more here, I have a, uh, a bar type lens holder mounted on a two inch uh, post and post holder. Okay, the first step in aligning this uh, interferometer is to make sure that the, le the laser is level uh, in the horizontal direction this way, uh, in the Z direction, what I'll call in this direction here, and also in the Y direction here. And what I plan to do is, uh, once you've mounted your laser on the tilt platform in the two inch post holder, uh, just take a quick measurement with a ruler to, to, to make sure that the height of the laser is consistent uh, across the, the breadboard. Right here we're just about five inches and if I follow this down this way um, we are pretty well maintained at, at about the same at the right height. And that can be adjusted later so that's not that critical. The critical component is this direction here. In order to measure whether or to determine whether you are aligned uh, with your uh, with the row of holes in this direction here, what I'm going to do is simply take my uh, my bar type lens holder and I'm going to mount it in the same row of holes at the end of the breadboard in such a way that um, I can deter I can adjust the laser this way and what I have it doing is um, I don't know if the camera can see this but I'm actually striking the center post here okay and what I'm going to do is adjust the the position of the laser so that it falls right in the middle there because this post is, is centered on that row of dots. Again, we can, we can adjust this slightly later, but it's critically important. The more centered this is at the beginning, the less work you'll have later on in aligning this. So right now it looks like it's fairly centered. Okay. So now that I know that this laser is level in this direction and it's also centered in this direction here, I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do is take this out right now. And the first step is to install the beam splitter. Okay. Now the beam splitter, I'm going to screw in a quarter 20 stud in here so that I can mount it in the, in the, uh, on the breadboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the center of the breadboard. It looks like it's right about here. Okay. So I'm going to mount this in the center of the breadboard. Okay, and make sure that it's tightened down fairly tight. Okay, because you don't want the thing wobbling later on because this is a very accurate vibration sensor. Uh, and what I want to do is make sure that the, the laser beam is centered on the face, on the face 
of the Q beam splitter. All right, and you can check that either by looking at the reflection off of the Q beam splitter and just to do a visual, okay, or by placing your index card there just to see where the beam comes through. Now, one of the benefits of using a cube beam splitter is that the cube is perpendicular, okay, which means flat sides are parallel on either side. And one of the, the techniques for aligning further the laser uh, in this direction here is to look at the back reflection off of this surface. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back reflection, and if the back reflection goes directly back into the laser, that means that this surface is perpendicular to the laser coming in. As you can see, the laser beam reflected off the cube beam splitter is coming back onto the laser. It shows up on the side of the laser here, and by adjusting the rotation, by rotating the cube beam splitter, okay, just slightly, okay, what I want to do is get that reflection to go back into the laser. Okay, so if we could pan back to the laser, okay, watch as I rotate it, that beam spot will move. And what I wanted to do is go right back into the laser. And there it does. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Actually, it looks like it is. But you can see a little bit of a spot reflected um, right at the bottom of the exit aperture of the laser here. And what I can do is I can further uh, tweak the, uh, the height adjustment of the laser so that that reflected spot also goes back into the laser. Okay. So once the light is reflected back in that direction, Okay, back in this direction, I know that the face of this cube beam splitter is perpendicular to the laser beam, and that's critically important at this stage because that's going to determine uh, how well the, the interferometer is aligned later on. The next part of this experiment is to mount your adjustable mirror um, in the beam path. Now, the first mirror that gets mounted uh, we want to mount the mirror itself so that it's about roughly three inches away from the cube beam splitter. The closer the distance, uh, the smaller the distance between the beam splitter and the mirror, the more st stable the uh, interferometer will be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this so that we're about three inches, if I count one, two, three. Now I'm going to position this so it's about three inches from the beam splitter and offset. And I have two quarter twenty uh, machine screws that I can just put through the center holes of the linear translation stage and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten these down like that like that and again it's very critical that everything is tightened down that avoid vibration. Now, what I'm looking for here is first that the laser beam is striking in the geometric center of that mirror. And in this case, it looks like it is, even though from that camera angle you can't see it. But what I can see is the back reflection. Okay? If we focus in on the laser here, again, the same way that we aligned the cube beam splitter to the laser, we're now going to align the laser to the to the um, to the mirror. Okay, so if I look at the the spot that is being reflected back onto the laser, okay, I can adjust the position of that spot by turning the adjustments on the mirror. And what I want is for that reflection to go right straight back into the laser, just about there. Okay. Now at this point, I've got the cube beam splitter face perpendicular to the laser beam. I've got the first mirror perpendicular to the laser beam, and all that is left is for the second mirror. So I'm going to take my second mirror, okay, and I'm going to mount it roughly the same distance away on this side. Okay? If I take my quarter twenty stud, I screw it into the bottom here, and then I mount this again three inches away from the center of the cube. One, two, three. tighten that down. Okay, I also want to make sure that the laser beam is striking the geometric center of this mirror also. 
just so that everything ha uh, is mounted in the center. Okay. Now, if you if you pan back on the laser, again, uh, because we have a cube beam splitter that is reflecting the light from the laser onto the mirror, we want the laser beam to retrace its path for that particular mirror. And if I simply adjust the mirror that I had just installed so that the laser beam goes back into the laser itself, okay, that front surface of that mirror is now perpendicular to the laser beam also. And what we're hoping to get, once we've accomplished that, are two beams that exit the cube beam splitter. We can pan out a little bit. Actually pan out a lot. <laughs> Show the whole system. We basically have our interferometer about 90% of the way completed. And basically what we have is a laser beam coming in here. It's being split in two by the beam splitter, one direction this way, one direction that way. This direction is reflecting off this mirror, coming back and being reflected in this direction here. The other beam is being reflected by the cube beam splitter, bouncing off this mirror here, coming back. So you basically have two lasers that are laser beams that are now co-aligned with one another. And what you should see if you take an index card is one spot, even if I go you know, 10, 15 feet away, Okay, what I want to see is one spot. If you see two spots, that means you have a misalignment and you have to go back and, and readjust. Okay, but if you take the proper precautions uh, up front, you'll be able to avoid that. Now the last part of the experiment is to mount your uh, laser beam expander. Okay, this is basically a microscope objective mounted in a microscope objective holder uh, mounted on a three inch post and post holder. And what I want to do is take my stud Screw it in like that. And somewhere in between the cube beam splitter and the laser, I want to mount this. Okay, so I'm about three or four inches away here. Okay, I'm going to tighten that down. Now it's going to be difficult to see the actual pattern without having some type of uh, surface to, to image that onto. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my we can pan back a little bit. I'm going to take my two inch post holder and I'm going to mount it uh, right on the edge of the table here. Like that. And I'm going to take my bar type lens holder, mount it in that. And really all I want to do is take a, an index card or a piece of paper and simply just tape it to that. Okay, and adjust the height so that uh, so that you can see the pattern that's being formed, okay, like that. Now, once you have that, I can go back and adjust the height of the microscope objective so that I get a pattern that is located in the center of this card. And as you notice here, if you can zoom in on the, uh, on the actual pattern that's being formed here. Okay, what you see are several fringes. And what that shows you is that uh, you've, got some, you've got a bullseye pattern for your interferometer. Okay, but you're slightly off axis. So all I'm going to do is go back and I'm going to adjust one of my mirrors. It doesn't matter really which one you adjust. Okay, but you're just going to tweak the mirror. And I'm tweaking the... Uh, let's see, can we see the mirror? Just back, back up a little bit, okay. I'm adjusting this mirror here, and what I'm gonna do is adjust that so that that bullseye is right in the middle, like that. Okay. Now what we have is an interference pattern. This is the basic pattern that the Michelson interferometer will generate. And as you notice, it's very sensitive to vibration. And also to touch. As I'm touching this, you notice that the fringe pattern oscillates between light and dark from the center. Now, the reason we have a, a linear translation stage is so that we can make that pattern move. If I change the, the distance between the two mirrors, 
okay, by adjusting the linear translation stage, you'll see those have the uh, fringes actually either move from the center or more move towards the center. If it moves away from the center, that means that the mirror that I'm adjusting is increasing in path length uh, as compared to the fixed mirror. If the pattern collapses into the center, that means that the adjustable mirror is uh, moving closer to the cube beam splitter. So if we can zoom back on the, on the pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this a little bit and just see what happens to the pattern. If you know, you can see there the, uh, the pattern in the center is oscillating between light and dark. Okay? And as you can see there, if right now we're collapsing the fringes into the center, which means the adjustable mirror is moving closer to the beam splitter. In this direction here, notice the fringes are emanating outward, which means the mirror is moving away. Now, for every fringe that's generated, that represents a movement of one half wavelength of light of that mirror. And that can be used uh, in, in a number of applications for uh, measuring displacement uh, in, in, in um, very accurate mechanical systems. I can also, uh, if I touch the table, notice the, uh, the pattern vibrating. If I put a detector in the center of that pattern, I could measure the frequency of that vibration. So it makes a very good vibration sensor. And we're not going to do it in this particular experiment, but if I actually collimated that laser light, okay, and what that would generate for me are straight line fringes. I can look at the deviation from the straight line fringe and determine the magnitude of a flaw in either one of those mirrors if one of them is uh, set, set up as a reference mirror. So the Michael's interferometer is not only an instrument that can be used for ultra-precise measurement of physical movement, displacement, vibration, but also it is a great exercise in optical alignment. Uh, if you can align a microcylinderferometer and get fringes, um, you know, that's your first stripe in optical alignment.